Thank you, Jesus. We're going to just let everybody stay where you're at. Even you, if you want. You're always there. You're so faithful. Worship team, you can come down. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When the Lord gives us a word for this body or any body, we need to be good stewards of that word. And we need to eat it. We need to digest it. We need to revisit the prophetic words that God has given to each and every one of us different times in our life. The prophetic word has carried David and I through some of our fiercest battles. And we would take from what our oversight has spoken, but also what God had spoken years and years ago. And the most amazing way he speaks is through his word. So we're going to revisit the word for 2018 that the Lord gave us because it's been six months because the Lord is saying, are you stewarding the words? Because as you steward the word, he gives you more. If you're not stewarding what he's already given you, we do go into a dry place. And we, we become very dysfunctional because we're looking in all the wrong places when he's already given us words that he's wanting us to steward. As in any year, the Hebraic and Gregorian New Year has intersected. That means the Hebraic New Year of September of last year and then this year of 2018. Last September, 5778 was ushered in as the head of the Hebrew New Year. In Hebrew, each number associates and interacts with the Hebrew letters and produces a rich picture. For instance, the number five represents grace. The number seven, perfection, completion, and maturity. And the number eight, a new beginning. 5778 is rooted in the 78 portion. 70 is represented by the Hebrew letter ayin. And the eight is represented by the Hebrew word het. I'll get to this in a minute. I get so excited. The number 70 represents the season that we are in. And ayin, as a letter, is synonymous of an eye. This is a season of increased eyesight and insight. And I don't know about you, but God has been waking me up in the night with new insight and new sight for what's to come. The number eight is represented by the Hebrew letter shet, het, which is synonymous with the image of an open gateway or door. It also means new beginning or an open gate or door, which leads to a new beginning, new kairos opportunities. So in other words, this is the year of a double new beginning. And what I love is our namesake gateway so ed and jama had this flag made for us and at the beginning of the mountains there's the mountains at the beginning of the at the foot of the mountain is the letter chet, which is gateway it's an open gateway and we we are gateway on mount zion and then it says releasing his manifested presence so we are also in headwaters. There's so many wonderful things that God is weaving together. The year of 2018 contains some powerful and interesting meaning as well. Likened to the Hebrew year 5778, but different in that it is enlarged to mean complete new beginning. It's what Jerry was saying, and it's what Jema was saying. Are we going to get stuck in yesterday's dry lake or are we going to go forward into the double new beginning that God has promised? It also means judgment by the word of God. 
Now, don't all shut down at that word judgment. Judgment is not a dirty word in the Bible, for it actually means to reach a decision favorably or unfavorably by weighing certain facts and elements with the word of God. It also means double fruitfulness, Father's blessing, and the complete, now listen to this, the complete putting off of the old man. How are we doing six months in? How are we doing with that word of walking out in who we truly are? We are dead to the old. It is buried. It is gone. The only thing we can dig up is a memory that we refuse to let go. As far as the word of God is concerned... Our man, old man is dead. It is dead. It's gone. The key, and you all heard about this at the beginning of the year. While browsing in downtown Denver, we went into a shop, and it was of Coloradans that make all, all things in there were made in Colorado. And I saw this key, and it was such an awesome key. It was a necklace. The main body of the key consisted of the insides of a watch. I didn't wear it today, but it's the insides of a watch. And then on the overlay of that watch was a sword. As I followed the key down to what opens up the lock, there were two hearts that opened up the lock. The necklace represents a prophetic picture of keys that will unlock specific doors and gateways for not only those in my worldwide body of believers, but particularly those at Gateway on Mount Zion in 2018. The watch. And now let me tell you something. Last weekend was a divine open gateway that 13 candidates and incumbents on the same day orchestrated by Holy Ghost. We did not do this. They began to call Dee Dee Wagner and Dee Dee Wagner and, and then others called us and contacted us, uh, contacted different people in our body and it all converged on one day. And you go, well, you know, that's politics. You bet it is. It's actually government is what it is. And we have an anointing for government. And I tell you, we love going to the Philippines with Ian and Jermaine because they have an anointing and a favor in the government in Philippines. And so going into social workers, I mean, we're talking social workers, Muslims were there, all different facets of life. And God opened that door governmentally for them. Well, we're in a season that God is opening up unusual gates here and unusual doors of opportunity. And so we just get to walk in it. It's coming to us. It's amazing. We're just going, what are you doing, God? This is the time and season for many extremes within the natural and spiritual realms. Like a volcano that started exploding and erupting the day before the team went to Guatemala. So much so that they had shut down the airport that they were to fly into. So the prayer request went out. And God, what are you saying? What are you doing? Are you shutting this door? Because if there's no plane, there's no going. But God opened that door. They got the run, only one runway in Guatemala City. It said they, they brought in all of the military to to shovel the ash off the runway. Yeah, just for Pastor Dave. And they went in, and now we're watching God explode and erupt in the Holy Spirit on the land. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. 
In fact, both realms will converge on many fronts in this year of the gateway and open door. Obviously, there has always been tremendous interaction between heaven and the earth. However, 2018 invites entirely new levels of supernatural encounters for both believers and pre-believers. In fact, beginning this year and then following multitudes will begin to birth into the kingdom because of supernatural heaven-to-earth experiences. In now time, spiritual battles are being fought and won by heavenly hosts, released and commissioned by my word, declared from the breath of my bride. As a result, listen to this. This is who you are, people of God. This is who you are. Generational bondages of spiritual blindness, doubt, and unbelief that have kept millions in chains are being stripped and broken. The body of Christ is rising up. Your declarations of truth, your declarations of my word have caused an eruption of harvest in spiritual realms. I'm expecting to hear about harvest in Guatemala. The time of harvest is at hand in Hawaii, in Jesus' name, on the main, the big island. A manifestation of that which is birthed in heavenly realms will be realized in the natural realm. Prepare for babies. Prepare, plan, and expect to receive. Get the receiving blankets ready for the overflow. So what have we done in this year? Because if, if we're given this word, we better be doing this here. So what are we doing to prepare? Well, we spent a ton of money redoing the entire basement to prepare for the children that are coming in. We redid the entire thing. We said we're doing. Well, where are the kids? We don't care. That's God's problem. He told us to prepare for harvest. And what do you do when you are pregnant is you prepare for that baby. The baby's not there yet. You're pregnant. You know it's coming. Right, Crystal? And you prepare. So you paint a room. You decorate it. You have a shower. And you get the furniture in. You prepare. So we are by faith doing what God has commissioned us to do in preparing for harvest. We are preparing by raising up mentors, raising up our discipleship, raising up and gleaning wisdom from God on how we are going to then disciple those that are coming in. We've got a brand new curriculum that Charlita put together with the help of pastors Dorothy and Dwayne. And so we have that ready to go. We did our pilot program, worked out the kinks, and we're ready to go because God told us to prepare. Amen? What's he telling you to prepare when you're looking at your life right now and going, what? Look at my life. I'm in a dry place. Well, let me tell you something. We all hit those places. But when God says to prepare, what are you doing to prepare? What you prepare for is what you're going to get. Are you preparing for doom and gloom? Then that's what you're going to get. Are you preparing for harvest in your family? That's what you're going to get. Are you preparing... Uh, Preparing your children to come into the kingdom by planting seeds of, oh, brother, when are you going to get your act together? Look what's wrong with Or are you going to be declaring into who they really are and planting those seeds to prepare them to come into who God has called them to be? What are we preparing? What we prepare for is what we're going to get. This is the time for family to run through the gateway of salvation and restoration. I believe uh, Renato sang about restoration today. I am a family God. I created family, and my eye and attention is on my family. 
Not one tear you shed for your family is lost. It is saved in a bowl within the chambers of my heart. I am actively working and building my family, not only within your personal household, but within global bridal gatherings worldwide. I am building my household of faith, but unless I build the house, those who labor do so in vain. Allow me to have my way in your family. Allow me to tear out, remove, and renovate. So often you stand in the way of the renovation because of what you see, hear, or feel during times of renewal. But trust me, in the process, trust me with the results. The enemy hates family because family reflects who I am. His hatred toward family comes from the fact it releases the sound of oneness, which weaponizes my people to defeat his every plan and strategy. That's why the enemy has come in and built up walls of denominations. This is why the enemy has come in and has put a dividing wall between the races and cultures. As I said earlier, we went to, we went to Sand Creek yesterday. We have such a love for the Native Americans. We have such a love for them. And, uh, and saw, you know, and heard what had happened and we said, isn't it just like the devil to come in and divide people because it's in the people where there's the power in that agreement. And we went to a fort and this fort represented what it should have been and what it was at one time. It was a trading post where all cultures came together and traded in peace. The Indians would set up their teepees out and bring their families, and then the men would trade. And then there was also army, uh, army uh, tents and, and camps set up where they would come. And then trappers, they were set up. And all of these, all of these people were set up and they got along and loved and appreciated and respected one another. But then man got in, in the name of God. They came in and decided, you know what, this is not really what we want. And they messed it up. We messed it up. And actually the devil came in, he messed it up because you know what, we just can't have people talking the same way. We can't have people getting along. So he comes in and he tries to divide us. Family and community are keys in opening the gateway of breakthrough and release within my body. I am so tired to the point where I'm spiritually enraged at the enemy. I am tired of strife in this place. I am tired of division and schisms. When somebody doesn't do something that you think they should have, then I'm going to leave and we do. People will have schisms and then they both leave. It is so stupid in the importance and in eternity. Let it go. Let it go. It is not so important that you lose your family, your marriage, your friends, your church over it. Let it go. The enemy is mad. He is terrified of the body of Christ coming together, but he will have no choice because it is coming together. Put time aside. Literally disregard it. It's about the watch. Disregard it while we commune together in our heart to heart worship. The enemy uses the ticking clock to steal you away from your physical family, your church family, and from me, recognize his strategies, and rather than glancing at your watch, focus on the eyes of your spouse, your children. Look into the depths of my spirit. Open your spiritual eyes and look. You will be surprised what you see. Time is a key to open the door to an upgraded flow of one sound within your household and spiritual family. I want to say something so bad, but Holy Spirit is telling me not to, so I won't. Maybe I'll write about it. 
Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This was the sword on the key. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit in the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is a sword of truth. And I'll tell you right now, it's under attack. And Judy, who is it? Andy Stanley. And I will absolutely call people out when they are leaders in the body of Christ because they're going to be called out by God. And he is now saying that the Old Testament needs to be, it's irrelevant and needs to be removed um, in, in the church. What? Disconnect with the Old Testament. The word of God is a sword of truth, but it faces assault on a daily basis. Unfortunately, much of this comes from within the hierarchies of the body of Christ. Leaders wrapped in self-righteousness, self-appointed mantles take on false authority to eliminate sometimes entire doctrinal sections of the word of God. I was just, I mean, this was doctrinal. You're talking a whole testament. This just happened. This just came out. That he is doing it. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I'm telling you, you just... His name's Andy Stanley, Charles Stanley's son. Uh, it, okay, da, da, da. To eliminate sometimes entire doctrinal sections from the Word of God because it doesn't fit into their flesh placating sermons. Exposure is coming, bringing light to those in leadership whose thoughts and intentions toward the Word of God is self-serving and heresy those things hidden in the darkness and camouflage and camouflage of relevance listen to this those things hidden in the darkness and camouflage of relevance will be forced up into the light and truth of God's powerful and living word the eyes of the innocent and ignorant will begin to open to the emptiness and powerlessness causing many to run after the fullness of father son and Holy Spirit. Many will begin leaving systems that have a form of godliness but deny its power. I am cleansing my house, says the Lord. Systems, movements, churches, and people who wrap themselves in a form of godliness and begin to shake and quake, will begin to shake and quake in 2018. My sword is dividing between soul and spirit and the thoughts and intentions of the heart. I love my children, even those who betray the very thing they promise to uphold, my word. I love them enough to bring my discipline, to woo them back into the safety of my truth. The entire wow, earth shakes and groans. You wonder what's going on? For the manifestation of my bride to step out and up into the purity of her true identity, walking in the fullness of my word. My people, where do you place your total focus and attention? On a human being? Do you exalt flesh and blood? Or do you try emulate? And who do you try emulating? A system? A movement? A person? There is only one worthy of full attention, only one worthy of exaltation, only one worthy of emulation. Yahshua Jesus, my only begotten son. Any system, movement, church, and people who wrap themselves in a form of godliness will begin to fall and disperse beginning this year. If they have built on foundations void of the fullness of my word, they won't be able to stand when the storms of exposure begins to blow as a result of compromise. If your reliance is in or on anything other than Jesus Christ, your house will also shake. All things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of my truth must come down. The word of God must be embraced in its entirety. Placing it above all consequences and persecutions that may erupt from doing so. 
For those who solidly and unashamedly stand on the full word of God, I see a huge gate open in heaven. I hear, and this is what happened today, Neveline heard it in pre-service prayer, didn't know what, I was pre- what this was about, and then we were singing about it when Jerry started talking, and Renato, about the river. Amen. Remember? Remember, Meveline, the river, the water, and we're all wearing these weird blue colors, and we're wondering, like, you know, I told Sister Dorothy, I said, I think we should do a duet today. I see a huge gate in heaven open. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing river, a sound that causes other sounds to vanish in its wake, a river of explosive proportions breaking through and pulverizing everything that stands in its path. The sound alone from this river destroys demons, principalities, territorial spirits, networks of evil, wickedness in high places. The lion of the tribe of Judah roars and calls this river. He calls this river the revelation of my power. The key to unlocking this door is the sword of the spirit, the word of God. The body of Christ must be firmly anchored in the word to steward the weight and of to ride this river. The never before miracle signs and wonders ride on the waves of this river. Explosive prophetic insights, precision discernment, and world-changing faith ride on its waves. The harvest of millions is in its plan and purpose. This is the plan and purpose of God. Are we going to ride it? It's up to you. I say yes. Love conquers all things. This is the double hearts on the key. Without love, we become clanging symbols of noise, void of power because love is the power. He is love. This is the year of double fruitfulness. That means double every fruit of the spirit, especially love. How are you doing, body of Christ? Are people seeing double love? Are they seeing double joy? Are you experiencing it in your family? To love the unlovable, to love our enemies, to love those who despitefully use us, those who persecute and refute us. His love brings confusion, listen, his love brings confusion to sickness, disease, and infirmity. His love dismantles bitterness, anger, and hatred. His love destroys death. His love covers all. What are you going to do? Because harvest is coming. And we'll keep shouting it. I don't care if two people are left in this place. Harvest is coming. And you know what? God just may want to fill it up with radical new believers. Huh? They have baggage, but you know what? That goes under the blood. I tell you, they are on fire for Jesus. What are you going to do if someone walks in here and he's a man and he's in a dress? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Boy, that was weak. Three people will love him. What's the rest of you going to do? Huh? Huh? Are you truly going to love him or are you going to judge him? Because I'm going to tell you something. You don't know when we see, there is a testimony, and I, I'm not going to name any names, but somebody had judged somebody in our body. And this person doesn't go to the church. Judge somebody in our body. They didn't get them. They didn't understand. They were loud. And all of a sudden, this person saw this person minister and gave a testimony of their life. Just like that, the entire thing changed in this judgmental person to one of total understanding and love. 
See, you don't know who's sitting next to you and the pain and the trauma that they have been through. Because I tell you, you judge somebody, you're going to find out that somebody judged you too because you were wearing shoes they didn't like. Or Pastor Didi, you know, she's gaining some weight. You wouldn't believe the things we get emails on. You look at me, I'm serious. So as a pastor, we can't afford to take offense because I'm telling you, we get all kinds of suggestions. And we get all kinds. But who is sitting next to you and you don't know their story? You don't know their story. Are you going to love them? Guess what? You're going to be tested. You are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Please, people, if you're not in that revelation, come on Tuesday nights and listen to Graham Cook talk about how dead your old nature is, how dead your old man is. It is dead and gone. Quit living in it. Live in the finished work of the cross. Finish. Live in the finished work of what Jesus has done for us. Right? All things are new. All things. Say, all things are new. All things are new. All things are new. This is good news. I heard somebody say, but, but I, I have this thing. You know what? You have that thing many times because it's an excuse to go forward. You know why I can say that? Because I did that. I was suicidal depressed for five years. Led worship at church. Like David, Psalms 42. I would lead there with the joyful song. Why are you so downcast, oh my soul? And I was like that. I go, what is this? What is this? Because it became a friend of escape. I would go into depression and I became a place where I would make excuses not to do things that I couldn't face or didn't think I could or didn't want to face and fear. How many of us walk in stuff? We don't want to give it up because it gives us an excuse not to go forward. We don't even know we're doing it. God says, get rid of it this year. I don't even want to say crucify the old man because it's already done. It's on the cross. It's done. Crucify. I say just live out the death of that thing. Come out new. This is good news. It's absolute reality and the truth of my word. 2018 presents. This isn't a given. This is an invitation. An open doorway to the full truth of who I created you to be in my kingdom. You are born and purposed for such a time as this. Come to me. If you carry weariness and are burdened down by the weights of your past, hurt, pain, discouragement, and trauma, leave the grave clothes of false identities behind and cross over the thresholds and through the gateway into your rightful position bought and paid for by the blood of my son. It's time to completely walk out of the old man and walk into the realm where impossibility bows and relinquishes to the miracle working realm of Christ. Ephesians 1.17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, this is the year to see, right? Insight, 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 that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What's your calling? The calling of Christ in you. What are the riches and of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above, say far above, all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things, say all things, 
under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things. Say all things to the church, which is his body. Say I'm his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. And you, say me. Say I. Me. My. Me. Oh. My. And you he made alive who were dead in tra who were dead, right? Yeah. Who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. I'm not a son of disobedience, Lord. Among whom he also, we also once conducted, once, once, say once, yeah. conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh. That's not who we are. We shouldn't be conducting ourselves in the lust of the flesh. That's dead. Dead and gone. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature children of wrath just as the others. That's what we were, but we are no longer. We know somebody, awesome man of God, preached the word. All of these different things got into pornography, which led into then uh, pedophilia. Child pornography. Hurting and it destroys people of God. Leave it. Leave it. We've watched families destroyed over this. Oh, God. But God. Who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved and raised, say raised up together. And made us to sit together in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We're not some old worm. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ. That in the ages to come, his might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, he said it again, you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, as anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. There's no works. You just walk away from the corpse. If you'll just walk away from the corpse, you're there. You don't have to work it up. You don't have to try to be holy, try not to sin. You walk away. I was going to do this, but I don't trust it. <laughs> you, walk, you walk away from the water. The old man's buried and dead in the water. You come out and you are a brand new fire breathing, tongue talking warrior of Christ. You don't have to worry about sin, the devil has to worry about you. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, as anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before him that we should walk in them. Love is the part of the key that will literally unlock every door and gateway in our 2018 and will pave our journey with favor and influence. We were listening to Graham talk about favor and influence this last Tuesday. Powerful. Walk, breathe, eat, and drink in his love. Bathe everything in love. In other words, just let him live through you. So all that is seen is him. That 2018 be the year we can genuinely say, as he is, so are we in this world. All right, let's stand up. And this is how we're going to end today. Look at that time. Pastor David will freak. <laughs> 12.30. I know, don't look at that clock. Thank you, Joseph. Give me five for keeping me accountable to that. Because I said, go look at that time. I, forgive me, Lord. All right.
what we're going to do, we're going to get in groups. I'm going to pray and, and pray a blessing over you. But I want you to get in groups of about four people that you may not know. Uh, you can be with your family, but find some others. Before you leave, we're going to spend about five minutes or however long you want to stay encouraging one another, praying for each other, uh, declaring this word and see it come to pass in each other. This isn't about praying for yourself. This is about praying for others because sometimes you have more faith than the person, right? That's where the power of the body of Christ is. So, Father, we just lift up the prophetic words you have given us as a body but also individually over the years. And, Lord, we thank you. Teach us how to steward those words and teach us, Lord, how to eat them and how to live and have our being in them because the prophecy, word of prophecy, is Jesus. It's you. Live and move and have our being in you. Lord God, I just declare over this body that there will be such a discerning of spirits and such a passion and such a love of people that they will not be able to contain spilling out and pouring forth the love of Jesus on everyone they see. That, Lord God, you are, you are commissioning, and I'm hearing the word, so I'll say what I'm hearing, commanding us to get out of these four walls and go out and bring them in. That, Lord God, it's not about putting it on Facebook, and that's a part. Lord God, it's not about uh, putting advertising out. Our advertisement has gotten dull in the body of Christ. The advertisement is the body of Christ going forth and doing what you've commissioned us to do. We've relied on social media. We've relied on flyers. We've relied on that, and that's nice. But, Lord, the power is the one-on-one -on -one hand extended out, even if it means picking children up. Even if it means picking someone up and bringing them, whatever it means, bringing them to supper at your house. So, Lord God, we ask that you would burn it deep in our hearts that when we leave here today, we're activated. We are activated with the love of Christ in our heart. And we choose to live, move, and have our being, even in this week, to demonstrate your love through power and signs, wonders, and miracles. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Renato, if you could play. Terry, turn up, Renato, and get in groups. And then you all are dismissed as you feel the Holy Spirit releases you.